Hi, welcome back. So this is Keyshot, as you can see, and what I'm going to do is import the OBJ. Um, what I've done is just exported it from 3ds Max, basically as it comes as an OBJ. So import robot OBJ, and let's click all defaults. And now we're going to wait patiently. Right, as we can see, it's still importing. I just went and picked up the post. Looks like some bills. Let's have a look in this envelope. An envelope inside an envelope. Ah, cool. Uh, my electricity bill used to be like £800, and now it's 60 so I'm not complaining too much. Right, it takes a few minutes, obviously, to import this, so you're busy staying at this, but it'll be done in a moment. There we go, now we get the setup bar, and we should get a BAMO, there we go. Now what I'm going to do straight away is save this as, and that will allow me to save it as whatever I want, so I'm going to go to my development folder, and put it in my robot weapon, and just save it as robot weapon 1. <laughs> It'll take a moment or two to save, but it will save us some time, because my middle mouse button really is playing up a lot at the moment. There we are. Right, so we have a couple of um, keys we can use here. Basically Alt, Left, Mouse button allows us to rotate. Okay, Alt, Right Mouse button allows us to zoom in and out if we go left and right like this. We can also rotate without holding Alt. Control, Left, uh, what's it again? It's not Control, it's uh, Middle mouse button, sorry, it held down, allows us to pan. There we go, just get in nice and close on the model. So we can see what we're looking at. Okay, now if you've never used Keyshot before, basically what it does is it's a real-time renderer. The better your graphics card and the better your system, the faster your real-time render is going to be. So here we can see, obviously, our base details. And what I'm going to do is just move this over to here rotate it around slightly and pull up my materials library just here like so okay and this is going to give us plenty of places to start from so for example we can start off right away on here which is our plastics and if I do that just there you can see already that we have this kind of serious looking material just applied straight on I can do the same straight over here like that and the good thing is that once we've applied these materials, I can then hide part, hide part. So I'm just clicking and then right clicking and it hide part. And then we can get to these parts here that are inside it. Okay, let's have a look under metals. And in my metal selection, I've got this rather nice distressed bronze here. Okay, these are all just things that kind of come with it, and I like Distressed Bronze. It was a copy of the original Distressed Bronze 1, which is here. Okay, and all I did is, if I go into the Edit, Continue, I just lightened the base and the metal, increased the roughness a little bit, whilst lowering the metal roughness and the metal coverage. And then over here, here's our bump maps and our textures. I left these more or less the same. And what I can do here is just left shift and then right shift where I want to assign it. Like that. Then click, right click, hide material. Hide part, sorry. Okay, so that goes away like that. And we've got plenty of nice metals we can be using for this. For example, we've got a rather nice gun metal here that I think is going to come in quite handy. So click there and there. And as you see, it's assigned all these parts. And what it does is, rather than what we had before, where all these are myriad different parts, these are actually just one part now. They're just bought in by material. So if I hide part, there they go, you see. 
We've got these nice hoses over here, so I could perhaps go to a nice soft touch. And increase the size of the previews. We might have some nice miscellaneous we can use. Here we are, there's a rubber. Or oh, there's a tyre. Let's move the tyre on to there, I think. Like that. And you'll notice all our hoses now have just adopted this colour. And they'll just hide part. Now down here, this is where we've got our magnets. So I'm going to go back to metal. We don't want to use too many. Okay, so it's best to kind of remember what it is we're using. And I'm certainly not going to use chrome because it looks a little bit silly. So magnets tend to be a kind of an irony colour. So we'll use this cast iron. In there like that. Then hide part. And off it goes. Now then we've got these rather nice things here. And I'm probably going to just do these in some other different coloured plastic. So let's have a look at our plastics. We've already used red, so we could use a yellow perhaps, just for the contrast. High part. And then down here we've just got a couple of other little bits that just need to be done with. So we'll go to metals. And perhaps just a simple brushed metal down here. Now obviously you can have more planning time than me. I don't have a lot of time to plan here. Just like I'm finding it quite hard to click on these. There we go. Now I can hide this part if I can just get my mouse over it. I probably can't. I think I'll just leave that. Okay, let's come back over here now. And for this I want a nice bit of steel in the piston areas. Hide part. And away it goes, you see. And then for the hands here, maybe some more gun metal. Get that nice kind of look. High part. And then down here, where these are. Do I want some more kind of distressed, corroded look, or do I want something else? Well, I don't want anodized, so we'll have cast steel. High part. And basically just keep going until we find that we have all the bits we need. Then we can unhide all, which is show all parts. And as you see now, our robot has the variations in colour that we need.